Hey everybody, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we're studying Matthew chapter number three. Let's get started with a recap of what happened in that chapter. All right, so basically, um, John the Baptist, we've already read about him before. He's talking about the coming Messiah, and he's saying he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And then all of a sudden, as if it was on purpose or something, he's there. And Jesus appears, and John the Baptist is like, hey, that's real convenient. There he is right there. That's what I'm talking about this whole time. And then um, Jesus says, hey, and he tells John the Baptist to baptize him. And John the Baptist is appalled. He's like, Lord, I'm not even fit to untie your shoes. And um, in this culture, um, that was the job of the lowest of the low. And so he, if he's not fit to do a servant's work, a poor servant's work, then, um, yeah. It's a, it's a picture of the upside down kingdom. That's right. That he's, he would say, John the Baptist would say, I'm not fit for that yet. You want me to do this big honorable thing that will be in history forever to someone so important. Yeah, that's right. And here's an interesting question when you read this chapter is when Jesus is baptized, why is Jesus baptized? See, we get baptized because we got saved, right? So we accept Christ as our Savior. We repent and believe the gospel, which, by the way, is exactly what John the Baptist's message was. His message was, in verse number 7, he saw the Pharisees coming. He's calling them a brood of vipers because they're not there for the right reasons. He's telling them they need to repent. Well, Jesus says in in Mark chapter mm -hmm. number 1, he says, the time, is, the time is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. Repent and believe the good news. Repeat, repent and believe the gospel. Well, when we get saved, our first act of obedience is to be baptized. Well, why was Jesus baptized? Here's what's interesting. Jesus didn't need to get saved because he is salvation. But just the way he came down at Christmas to be with us, at his baptism, Jesus identified himself with the sinners that he came to save. Now, when John the Baptist was looking for Jesus, you know, he's, he's teaching, he's teaching, he's teaching. What did you say John the Baptist kept saying over and over? He's coming. And what? Did, and you said it just, you said it real fast. You said, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Well, what word means that which is coming? Which is set in place, is appearing, or is arriving? Advent. What, Advent means that. <laughs> yes. So listen, literally John the Baptist, in, in, if we just kind of wanted to set it out there, John the Baptist is saying, Advent, 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 Advent. And then Jesus walks up to the river and he's like, hello. And so that's kind of where the he's story arrived. goes. That's right. Well, you got, what else you got from there? Well, um, today in our um, devotion book, it talked about John 1.1, 1, 1, which has been really heavy on Everything I'm looking at has, is is including that and some scripture I've been uh, committing to memory. And it points to Jesus. And it points to Jesus, especially verse 1 of John 1, uh, points to the very beginning and talks about how Jesus always was because God always was. And so today's uh, devotion talks about the greatness of God and how he is timeless and he is far beyond what our minds can even comprehend. Before time even existed, he was. Before there was a job to do, before he chose to take part in creation, uh, he was. And so what I love is that John the Baptist is so aware of his place in all of that. I love seeing his humility here. I love what you're talking about. He he says, I'm not fit to even tie your sandals. I'm I'm lower than a servant. He, in light of who this great, humongous God is, he knows his place and he, he humbles himself. And it's a good reminder of where I should be when I think about the greatness and the bigness of God. I should be humbled that a God like that chooses me, chooses to come to earth because of little old me, chooses to live a sinless life on this earth and die to save little old me, um, someone who's not fit to tie the sandals of Jesus. That's right. Uh, we and our family, we love John the Baptist because we, literally we're Baptists. Oh, yeah. He's in Baptist. and, and there's a lot of Johns in my family. Okay, we so like my grandpa is Jimmy John. My daddy is Johnny. I'm Jonathan. We have John, the other one of him. Period. Yep. 
So we so so we love John the Baptist. Okay. So here's what I like John about John the Baptist. He's crazy. Like it, the Bible describes him as He's out. A mountain man. He is a mountain man. He literally lived in the mountain. He likes chocolate. I don't know about that. The carrot plant. The little okay. like this okay. plant. <laughs> All right. So John the Baptist did We're live up in the mountains. And they kind of near the Dead Sea, there were some mountains. John lived up there. When he comes down to the Jordan River and he's and he's baptizing people, like he don't care anything about these Pharisees who think they're pretty important stuff. John, he's not impressed by them and he calls them out. It says he wears like camel camel hair garments, which can't be comfortable. Okay, I imagine really scratchy. He's got a leather belt on. He's eating honey. And the Bible says he's eating locusts, which now here's the deal. He got a little bit of a little bit of a question here. When the Bible says that John the Baptist eats locusts, what does that mean? So, meaning number one that I always thought when I was growing up was like what you hear the at bugs, nighttime, the, the bugs. Like he's going outside taking locusts off a tree, and that's dinner. Okay, valid option number one. That's called a locust. The other is what's this, Jen? It's the carob plant. C A R O B. Um, good job, and thank you. And when it opens up, it looks like I guess the wings of a locust. And so, in Israel, they call it the locust plant. And I don't know if you can tell, but it kind of looks like a bean pod yep. because inside it, it does have beans, but it's like I guess you could compare it to the cacao, like that makes chocolate. And so, I guess it tastes like chocolate. And I was like, I knew John the Baptist and I were best friends because I like chocolate. So, whether he was, whether he was eating the bug. Or he was eating the he was eating the pods off of the trees, the locust plant. We don't know. All I know is this. Either way, that tells us John the Baptist was not a rich man. He was not a he was not a man that was in industry. He was humble. Because if he is pulling this off a tree or eating bugs, it is it he is roughing it. Okay? He is a mountain man. Here's the other side of this. <clears throat> Where does John gather his congregation? Well, the scripture says in, in Matthew, in Mark, or wherever we are, Matthew 3, his congregation gathered not in temples, but in the wilderness. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness. A wilderness is a dry and barren place. It is a scary place. And listen, just like in the Old Testament, before God's people got to the promised land, before they saw the promise, where were they for 40 years? The in the wilderness. So now we've got John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness and God's promised Messiah shows up and they get to see him. And so whenever you're reading, for instance, our, our Advent book said, no matter how big you think God is, he's, he's that much bigger. bigger. Okay, listen, John chapter number one is telling us that Jesus in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. This is why it connects to what John the Baptist is saying in Matthew 3. He said, you are so big, I am not even worthy to do the lowest job of untying your sandals. Why? Because Jesus is the Word, and in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word Bless was God. God. So John the Baptist is saying exactly who Jesus is. But the whole time, you know what his message is? He's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. He's going to be set into place. He's going to appear. And then all of a sudden, he appears. John the Baptist was preaching Advent. And as we gear our minds toward Christmas, we need to understand it's all about seeing God's promise of the Messiah and properly responding to him. Keep reading. All this stuff ties in together. We're excited about it. Go eat some bugs or eat some plants and be like John the Baptist. All right? Have a great night. Bye. Bye.